Hi, this is Daryl Barnes with Barnes Basics, and I'm on Kinematics Problem 5. This is where a person is shooting a pellet rifle at a mistletoe in a tree. It's near the holiday season, trying to knock the piece of mistletoe out of the tree without having to climb it and be dangerous. So here is uh, 5C. Neglecting air resistance. How long is the pellet in the air? The pellet, by the way, missed the branch and went straight up. In problem 5AB, we determined that it rose 1,705 meters into the air. Now, that's a positive direction, but if we're trying to figure out how long it's in the air, I'm going to actually use a modified version of D is equal to VIT plus one half AT squared. I'm gonna use a modified version of this one to solve for how much time it is in the air on the way down and then multiply that two by two, because if we don't have air resistance, then the, the time up is gonna equal the time down. Now, if the, if the pellet has been shot from a pellet rifle, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go up, and then it's gonna stop before it starts coming exactly straight back down along that same pathway. So at this apex right up here, the initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second. So if initial velocity is zero, then any, it doesn't matter how much time it is, that's going to be null and void. So we're going to be working with a different equation. D is equal to one half GT squared. So let's solve for time. Let's do that. So what I'm suggesting is let's multiply both sides by two. Two times D is equal to one half GT squared multiplied by two. We get rid of the two. And then to, let's divide both sides by G. Let's do that. So we, in effect, have T squared is equal to two D divided by G. And then if we take the square root of both sides, Let's do like that. T is equal to the square root of 2D divided by G. And so that is our working equation. So we've done all the heavy lifting. All we've got to do is just plug a number, a couple of numbers in here. We've got a negative value downward for the distance, and we've got gravity as negative 9.81. So let's plug this in and see what we get. We got two times negative 1705, and that's meters. And then we have negative 9.81 meters per second squared on the bottom. Meters will cancel. We're left, we're left with one over one divided by second squared, which when you flip that all around, it comes out to uh, the square root of second squared is seconds, which is the correct unit. So let's put this in our calculators and see what we get. We have four sig, four sig figs here. Remember that we do not use the sig figs in conversion factors or in variables like this to determine the sig figs of the answer. So we're going to have something with four sig figs as far as our answer goes. So let's start off with the TI-84. Across the top of your calculator, it should, should say normal, fixed, six, decimal, real, degree, and math print. And then on the TI Inspire, when you get on the home screen for your document, it and you go to settings, click on settings, go to document settings, you should have float six degree normal and approximate. I spent a whole video on this at the first of this play series explaining this in detail, and I'm not going to do that this time. Just make sure you have all that set, and we'll be good to go. So, in our calculators, to make this really simple, what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply 2 times negative 1705 divided by negative 9.8, and we're going to get an answer there, and then we will take the square root of it at the end. Let's keep this simple. Let's don't make this hard. So, here we go. Let's, in, our, in our TI-84, we've hit on and clear 2 multiplied by negative 1705 and the negative is the one by the answer key, 
hit enter, and I get negative 3410, divided by negative 9.81, enter. Okay, this should say 9.81. And I got the positive 347.604. Four eight five. Okay, don't start rounding things and doing sig figs until the very end. So we've got that number in our calculators now. So let's hit second x squared, which will pull the radical, second negative, which will pull the answer, and we get 18.64 seconds. And that is how long it takes for it to go from this peak all the way to the bottom. So we'll go ahead and put that into four sig figs. 18.6, it says 644, 18.64 seconds. That's for the down trip. So to find it for the up and the down, which is gonna be the equal amount of time up as equal amount of time down. Remember gravity works on something moving upward and it works on something moving downward. So we're gonna say two multiplied by 18.64 times 2, and we get 37.29 seconds. seconds. So that's the total, that's the total time. And that answers the question, how long is the pellet in the air? Marvelous. <clears throat> and if we wanted to, we could convert that to scientific notation. We could say 3.729 times 10. I'm going to move it one place, 10 to the first seconds. We could say that. That would be okay to do that. Marvelous. Very good, class. Very good. Let's do this with the TI Inspire now. 2 multiplied by... Negative 1705, enter. Divided by negative 9.81, enter. I got 347.604. Okay, this did the float six, so it cut off a little bit of that. It's a little bit different than fix six, but let's hit control X squared, control negative, which is answer, hit enter. And I do get 18.6442. I got 18.6442, and when I round that off, uh, cut it off, the four does not make the other four go up, so 18.64 is correct. Multiplied by two times two, enter 37.2883, so I rounded that off to 37.29, or 3.729 times 10 to the first seconds. That works, marvelous, another happy face.